BERT transformer model. How do we build sentence vectors from a BERT model? Well, of course we have to start with the words, the elements of the sentences. And here we are, you have here on the bottom you see is our sentence. How are you? We have the classification token at the beginning, we have an embedding layer and we have 12 encoders stacked together. This is BERT. Why this complexity of BERT? Because we want to have a contextualized embedding. Remember, word to vec gave us a static word embedding, but this here gives us a dynamic word embedding depending on the other words in the sentence. So we can differentiate between the bank you sit on and the bank where you have your money. And each encoder output gives us a hidden representation of our uh, tokens. So if you have a look at this, and now please look at the right hand side, you can see that for each token, our CLS token, our word on our sub word token, we have word piece, we have a 768 dimensional vector coming out of each encoder step. And the question is now, which vector to take for a single word, like how? Which of these 768 dimensional vector representations should I take for a single word how? And you might say, take the last one, the last hidden layer, or there's another one. A, take the last four hidden layer, concatenate them, add them, whatever. Now for sentences, it is the same question. Which vector to take for embedding the whole sentence? Now, the part is, in the original paper, there was that the CLS token, the embedding of the CLS token has all the information of the whole sentence. So you take either all of the CLS token, or maybe you just take a specific part of the hidden layers of the CLS token because you have self-attention. So every word in the sentence is referenced in the CLS token. You can take the second to last encoder output for sentence embedding. And here we are, and we are ready to code now in our Colab notebook, BERT. And so we start, we say pip install transformers, and then from transformers we have our BERT tokenizer and our BERT model, and of course we have PyTorch installed. So let's run the loading of the model. Oops. And as you can see, if I say here, show me the model, we have here our classical BERT model, here our BERT model, our embedding, we have a vocabulary of 30,000 tokens, we have an embedding of 512 tokens, so this is the maximum length, and then we have a lot, we have an encoder, of course, and then we have the first BERT layer, we have the BERT attention and self-attention, and then we have, of course, a feed-forward network. So then we have second bird layer, and I think in total we should have 12 bird layers. And here we are, 11th layer, bird layer. Of course, it's a stack, a stack of encoders. And then we have a output, and we have a linear layer, and of course, a dropout. And then, and this is important, we have also a pooler, and a pooler is nothing else than a dense layer, a linear layer, and an activation function. This is tangens hyperbolicus. So great. Now that I have a model, we have to load a bird tokenizer from a pre-trained model, the bird base uncased model. You remember we have word piece here as the tokenizer. So not every word is a token, but also a subword can be a token. We have a look at here the word embeddings. So let's do this, let's run this. And as you can see here, if you tokenize our sentence, here is the sentence I want embeddings for. Then in BERT, it reads like here the CLS, the classification tag token. Here is the sentence I want, and embeddings is a word not familiar, not in the vocabulary. So it splits it in embeddings. So we have four tokens for, and this is exactly the presentation you get if you run the tokenizer. Now, if you want to map the token strings to their vocabulary indices, no problem at all, let's do this. So here again, the same sentence, the CLS, the start token classification, here is the sentence I want, 
Now embeddings again split in four tokens, four full stop, and a separator token. Great. Now we have now in Bert, remember we have to mark all the tokens belonging to one sentence. Then we have our input IDs and our attention mask so that we know where to do the self-attention to. And if you have a look at this, the uh, segment tensor, this is of course every token belongs to the first sentence. And then as I showed you, the token tensor in itself is that here we have 101 is the CLS token, 102 is encoded the separating token. And then we have here our specific vocabulary uh, numbers. And so the first number is 2182. First number is 2182. Perfect. This is now the representation. So now we're going to run the text through our BERT model and collect all of the hidden states produced from all of the different 12 layers. Or if you think about it in a BERT uh, notation, the encoder stack with the 12 encoder, where each encoder, of course, has a self-attention port and a feed-forward network. So let's go this model. We have now our parameters we just defined here, our input IDs, our attention mask, and here we go. Now, if you want to see what is the output, let's have a look at this. So we get three elements back. And I just want to show you here with the model, there was something I have to tell you that you take care about it. If you have the bird model, so this is the pure bird model without any head. Please keep in mind, this is just the bird model. And then you specify the output hidden state is true. So you got a special structure that what we need. So at first, uh, bird model without a head. So no uh, language masking or no for sequence classification or not language modeling whatsoever. Here, what we need now is here in the keys, what we are looking for is the hidden states in our encoder stack. And without the hidden layers uh, equal true, we would not get this in default. We will only get the first two. So the last hidden state, then the pooler output. And what we are in will be interested in is the hidden states from each uh, different encoder. So what we do, since we have one, two, and three elements, and we are interested in the third, so we say output two. This is now the hidden states. And let's do this. And as you can see, this should be 13 tensors. No way, because we have here 13 tokens that we have to take care of. And there's also, if you look at this, a different notation because you can either say okay outputs and please show me the third element so two or you can uh, address the key of course and say output dot the hidden states and this is why i showed you here the hidden states parameter is here available for us and if we run this we get exactly the same results here between 41 and 42 the cell numbers now the pool output sometimes i was asked can I use the pooler output? I would not recommend it. Uh, I will explain it a little bit better. There's one explanation I found on the internet. Okay, but uh, if you really want to learn about this, there's a beautiful, beautiful tutorial. Uh, this is the link. I leave it also in the description of this video from McCormick. And this is about bird word embeddings tutorial. You can see we are here in the 2019, 2020. So more than two years ago, but I got so many questions regarding then UMAP, the dimensionality reduction, where exactly will we apply it? And this is here to show you where it's going to happen. So let's have a look at our BERT model. What we get is the number of layers is 13. Yes, because we have, remember, an initial embedding layer. And then we have our 12 BERT layers, our 12 encoders with a self-attention head. The number of batches is, of course, one sentence. The number of tokens is 14, I think. Yes, 14 tokens. And we have the number of hidden units is, of course, default with BERT here, the BERT base model 768. So this is great. CLS token I'll show you in a second. So now that we have the BERT model, we're again with the word vector. How do we get a word vector for one word in a sentence? Now, there are different ways you can do this. 
But again, what is the problem? We would like to get an individual vector for each of our token. But for each token of our input, of our words, we have 13 separate vectors, each of a length of 768. So we have 13 separate vectors. Which of those 13 vectors should we take off? Take care. So could it be a combination of layer? Uh, what is the best representation? And there are two ways in literature that proved successful, but please try out in your particular case, experiment a little bit to see if your model is really the most performant model. So the first is, let's concatenate the last four layers, giving us a single word vector per token. And since we concatenate, so we add together, we put pieces together like Lego pieces, we put them together one after the other. We have four times the last four layers, four times 768 hidden the dimension. So in, we have now suddenly a vector with a dimension of 3000. So we are in a high dimensional vector space. And this is, this is the place where then after we have done this, UMAP will come in. And if we have a sentence vector in a vector space, or maybe just in a topological space, UMAP will help us reduce here our specific vector to this sentence, which has 3000 coordinate system components to reduce this to 100 or maybe three. So let's combine all the layers to make this a whole big tensor. We can stack it. This is great. Since we have only one sentence, we remove the batches. And we just swap out. And we have now a PyTorch vector with a size 14, because we have 14 tokens and 10 words. And 13, you remember, is then the, the number of the layers in our encoder stack. And the hidden uh, dimensionality is 768. So this is our tensor size, our PyTorch tensor size. So now we do the concatenation, and this is as easy as it goes. For token and token embeddings, we say torch concat, token the last four, token minus one, token minus two, token minus three, and token minus four. Let's put them together, and what we get, this is exactly what we are looking for. We have now a shape 14 times 3000. So for each of our 14 tokens now, we have a vector representation uh, where each vector representation has 3000 coordinate components instead of just three that you are familiar with it. So for every word of a token, we have a vector with 3000 dimension. Great. An alternative method is embedding by adding the last four layers. So we just do not concat concatenate it, but now we add it together. So it's a simple summation. The torch.sum, you know this, the last four, and we do this. Of course, the dimensionality now is different because now the shape, again, for each of our 14 tokens, we have, instead of a 3000 dimensional vector, we have only a 768 dimensional vector, a word vector based on BERT. So we can construct our word embedding, our word vector in a vector space, and in a vector space, we can apply cosine similarity and, and, and. We can calculate for 200 years, we have the mathematics for a vector space algebra. So this is beautiful. But of course, now that we know how to do the word, you might say, okay, and how do I do a sentence vector? So I have a complete sentence with my 14 tokens. And can I get one vector that indicates in a high dimensional space a vector space, this sentence vector. How to do this? Well, you, you guessed it already. Uh, there's a simple approach in literature to average the second to last hidden layer of each token producing a single 768 length dimensional vector. So, and if we do the second to last hidden layer, this is easy. We have here all our hidden states, all the outputs of the different encoder in our encoder stack. And then we say the second to last, so minus two. Now our batch is one, so okay, we take this one. And then if we print the shape now of this token, 
vector, you will see that our token vector shape has 14 times 768. And now that we take the average of all 14 token vectors of the second to last state, this is simply the command torch dot mean. And as you can see, our final sentence embedding vector has the shape 768. So this is exactly what we are looking for. One single vector that, that characterizes our whole sentence of 14 tokens in a high dimensional vector space in a 768 dimensional vector space. And if we build those vectors in these high dimensional vector spaces, then to do a clustering, we need UMAP and we need HDB scan to do some clustering algorithm in these high dimensional vector spaces. So here's exactly after this point where you say that we have now the, the UMAP coming in. So if you want to see how this tensor looks like, here we go. Our sentence embedding tensor is here, a tensor with 768 dimensional vector components. So this defines a vector in a 768 dimensional space. Now, of course, if you would like, as I showed you also a CLS token embedding, we have, we remember our outputs and then we said our last hidden state. So this is really the last hidden state the tensor size and you see here we have a torch tensor with 14 for our 14 tokens and a 768 dimensional uh, vector space and the tensor itself here is 14 times 768 so 14 rows and the different columns so we have 768 columns in this tensor representation and then if we say okay we go for all the sentences and we go for all the hidden layers, but we just go for the very first, for the zero elements of our, if you want, a sequence. This is exactly the, the in the hidden representation of the CLS token. So we just pick the CLS token if you want. We can do this easily. So we get a torch, uh, a PyTorch vector size. Uh, of 768 dimensional vector and if you want to have a look at this uh, tensor well here we go i hope you believe me 768 components and of course if you yeah, detach from gpu to cpu and a numpy array you simply get if you do numpy we have now a typical numpy array that we can continue working on with this so these are how you do convert a complete sentence with quite a lot of words into a single vector representation, a single vector embedding in a high dimensional vector space. And if we have all of these vectors in the high dimensional vector space, then comes in UMAP or param parametric UMAP and then you reduce the dimensionality of the vector space. But of course you want to have the complexity of the information essentially conserved also in a low dimensional vector space. And UMAP with its topological approach is able to handle this. So I hope this was a short introduction to a rather old topic two years ago. Uh, Bert was en vogue how to construct word vectors if you have like 13 separate vectors, each of a length of 76H of your encoder stack. This is of course only for BERT base. If you go for BERT uh, large or extra large, you have instead of 12 encoders, you have 24 encoders, your, your length goes up. So the complexity increases, whatever. But this is just to show you if you are interested in to build your sentence transformer right on BERT before the pure sentence transformer, the Siamese approach from a by encoder and or a cross encoder with SBERT came along. This was the way to do word embeddings. And of course, the main point is here that we have not a static word uh, representation, but we have a context, a word embedding of each and every word in our sentence. So I think this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit and I see you in the next video.